The Vision of the Body of Christ and the Anti Ministries by Tommy Hicks. Um, there's a vision that I want to share with you tonight, and it's a very impactful vision. And as you allow your heart to just absorb this vision, I think you will see what I began to see today. Um, about Joel's army. So, just briefly, Tommy Hicks lived from 1909 to 1973. He was a uh, evangelist uh, in the Argentinian revival of 1954. He had gone to Argentina to replace another evangelist who was unable to fulfill his commitment for full gospel meetings. He visited the Argentine dictator leader, President Juan Perón, who many of you will remember. And President Perón was suffering from a persistent and disfiguring skin disease which had become so noticeable that he no longer allowed photographs to be taken. He asked Tommy Hicks if Jesus could heal him. As they clasped hands, the power of God immediately flowed into Perón's body and his skin became as clear as a baby's. Needless to say that Perone gave Tommy everything he requested. The Atlantic Stadium with a seating capacity of 25,000 was rented. Soon overwhelming crowds forced them to relocate to the Hur Hurricane, H-U-R-A-C-A-N-E football stadium with a seating capacity of 110,000, which also overflowed. In two months, three million were reported to have attended with 300,000 decisions for Christ and a massive number of outstanding healings. Tommy Hicks claimed among his current converts the vice president of Argentina, who along with his wife came to Brother Hicks's hotel room where they were both saved. He reported that he healed the son of the vice president of Bolivia and met with the richest woman in Argentina. He went on to preach behind the Iron Curtain in Russia and satellite countries. And this overseas, this impact overseas, won him support from the Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship and opened the door to many places for ministry. The following vision originally appeared in a book entitled Pertinent Prophecies by John N. and Dorothea M. Gardner and was given by Tommy Hicks, a noted evangelist in 1961. This is called the Body of Christ and the End Time Ministries. So this is the, the, the vision. My message begins July 25th, about 2.30 in the morning at Winnipeg, Canada. I had hardly fallen asleep when the vision and the revelation that God gave me came before. The vision came three times, exactly in detail, the morning of July 25th, 1961. I was so stirred and so moved by the revelation that this has changed my complete outlook upon the body of Christ and upon the end time ministries. The greatest thing that the Church of Jesus Christ has ever been given lies straight ahead. It is so hard to, hard to help men and women to realize and understand the thing that God is trying to give His people in the end times. I received a letter several weeks ago from one of our native evangelists down in Africa, down in Nairobi. This man and his wife were on their way to Tanganyika. They could neither read nor could they write, but we have been supporting them for over two years. As they entered into the territory of Tanganyika, they came across a small village. The entire village was evacuating because of a plague that had hit the village. He came across natives that were weeping, and he asked them what was wrong. They told of their mother and father who had suddenly died, and they had been dead for three days. They had to leave. They were afraid to go in. They were leaving them in the cottage. He turned and asked them where they were. They pointed to the hut, and he asked them to go with him, but they refused. They were afraid to go. 
The native and his wife went to this little cottage and entered in where the man and woman had been dead for three days. He simply stretched forth his hand in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and spoke the man's name and the woman's name and said, In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command life to come back to your bodies. Instantaneously, these two heathen people who had never known Jesus Christ as their Savior sat up and immediately began to praise God. The Spirit and the power of God came into the life of those people. To us that may seem strange and a phenomenon, but that is the beginning of these end-time ministries. God is going to take the do-nothings, the nobodies, the unheard of, the no accounts. He is going to take every man and every woman, and he is going to give to them this outpouring of the Spirit of God. In the book of Acts, we read that in the last days, God said, I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh. I wonder if we realized what he meant when God said, I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh. I do not think I fully realized, nor could I understand the fullness of it. And then I read from the book of Joel, Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain, Joel 2.23. It is not only going to be the rain, the former rain and the latter rain, but he is going to give to his people in these last days a double portion of the power of God. Now this is 1961. As the vision appeared to me after I was asleep, I suddenly found myself in a great high distance, but I was looking down upon the earth. Suddenly, the whole earth came into my view. Every nation, every kindred, every tongue came before my sight from the east and the west, the north and the south. I recognized every country and many cities that I had been in, and I was almost in fear and trembling as I beheld the great sight before me. And at that moment, when the world came into view, it began to lightning and thunder. As the lightning flashed over the face of the earth, my eyes went downward and I was facing the north. Suddenly, I beheld what looked like a great giant and I stared and looked at it. I was almost bewildered by the sight. It was so gigantic and so great. His feet seemed to reach to the North Pole and his head to the south. Its arms were stretched from sea to sea. I could not even begin to understand whether this be a mountain or this be a giant. But as I watched, I suddenly beheld a great giant. I could see his head was struggling for life. He wanted to live, but his body was covered with debris from head to foot. And a time, at a time, this great giant would move his body and act as though it would even raise up at times. And when it did, thousands of little creatures seemed to run away. Hideous creatures would run away from this giant, and when he would become calm, they would come back. All of a sudden, this great giant lifted his hand toward the heaven, and then it lifted its other hand. And when it did, these creatures by the thousands seemed to flee away from this giant and go into the darkness of the night. Slowly, this great giant began to rise, and as he did, his hands, his head and hands went into the clouds. As he rose to his feet, he seemed to have cleansed himself from the debris and filth that was upon him, and he began to raise his hands into the heavens as though praising the Lord, and as he raised his hands, they went even unto the clouds. Suddenly, every cloud became silver, the most beautiful silver I have ever known. As I watched the phenomenon, it was so great, I could not even begin to understand what it all meant. I was so stirred as I watched it, and I cried unto the Lord, and I said, O oh Lord, what is the meaning of this? 
and I felt as if I was actually in the spirit and I could feel the presence of the Lord even as I was asleep and from those clouds suddenly there came great drops of liquid light raining down upon mighty this giant and slowly slowly this giant began to melt began to sink itself in the very earth itself and as he melted his whole form seemed to have melted upon the face of the earth and the great rain began to come down liquid drops of light began to flood the very earth itself and as I watched this giant that seemed to melt suddenly it became millions of people over the face of the earth as I beheld the sight before me people stood up all over the world they were lifting their hands and they were praising the Lord at that very moment there came a great thunder that seemed to roar from the heavens I turned my eyes toward the heavens and suddenly I saw a figure in white in glistening white the most glorious thing that I have ever seen in my entire life I did not see the face but somehow I knew it was the Lord Jesus Christ and he stretched forth his hand and as he did he would stretch it forth to one and to another and to another and as he stretched forth his hand upon the nations and the people of the world men and women as he pointed toward them the liquid light seemed to flow from his hands into them and a mighty anointing of God came upon them and those people began to go forth in the name of the Lord I do not know how long I watched it it seemed it went into days and weeks and months and I beheld this Christ as he continued to stretch forth his hand but there was a tragedy there were many people as he stretched forth his hand that refused the anointing of God and the call of God I saw men and women that I knew people that I felt would certainly receive the call of God but as he stretched forth his hand toward this one and toward that one they simply bowed their head and began to back away and each of those that seemed to bow down and back away seemed to go into darkness blackness seemed to swallow them everywhere I was bewildered as I watched it but these people that he had anointed hundreds of thousands of people all over the world in Africa England Russia China America all over the world the anointing of God was upon these people as they went forward in the name of the Lord I saw these men and women as they went forth they were ditch diggers they were washerwomen they were rich men they were poor men I saw people who were bound with paralysis and sickness and blindness and deafness as the Lord stretched forth to give them this anointing they became well they became healed and they went forth and this is the miracle of it this is the glorious miracle of it those people would stretch forth their hands exactly as the Lord did and it seemed as if this there was the same liquid fire in their hands as they stretched forth their hands they said according to my word be thou made whole as these people continued in this mighty end time ministry I did not fully realize what it was and I looked to the Lord and said what is the meaning of this and he said this is that which I will do in the last days I will restore all that the canker worm the palmer worm the caterpillar I will restore all that they have destroyed these my people in the end times will go forth as a mighty army shall and they shall sweep over the face of the earth as I was at this great height I could behold the whole world I watched these people as they were going to and fro over the face of the earth suddenly 
there was an African man, and in a moment he was transported by the Spirit of God, and perhaps he was in Russia, or China, or America, or some other place, and vice versa. All over the world, these people went, and they came through fire, and through pestilence, and through famine. Neither fire or persecution, nothing seemed to stop them. Angry mobs came to them with swords and with guns. And like Jesus, they passed through the multitudes and they could not find them. But they went forth in the name of the Lord and everywhere they stretched forth their hands. The sick were healed, the blind eyes were open. There was not a long prayer. And after I viewed the vision many times in my mind and I thought about it many times, I realized that I never saw a church and I never saw or heard a denomination. But these people were going in the name of the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. As they marched forth in everything, they did as the ministry of Christ in the end times. These people were ministering to the multitudes over the face of the earth. Tens of thousands, even millions, seemed to come to the Lord Jesus Christ as these people stood forth and gave the message of the kingdom, of the coming kingdom, in this last hour. It was so glorious, but it seems as though there were those that rebelled and they would become angry and they tried to attack those workers that were giving the message. God is going to give to the world a demonstration in this last hour as the world has never known. These men and women are of all walks of life. Degrees will mean nothing. I saw these workers as they were going over the face of the earth. When one would stumble and fall, another would come and pick him up. There was no big I and little you, but every mountain was brought low and every valley was exalted and they seemed to have one thing in common. There was a divine love a divine love that seemed to flow forth from these people as they worked together and as they lived together. It was the most glorious sight that I have ever known. Jesus Christ was the theme of their life. They continued and it seemed that days went by, went by as I stood and beheld this sight. I could only cry and sometimes I laughed. It was so wonderful as these people went throughout the face of the whole earth bringing forth in this last end time. As I watched from the very heaven itself, there were times when great deluges of this liquid fire seemed to fall upon great congregations, and that congregation would lift their hands and seemingly praise God for hours and even days as the Spirit of God came upon them. God said, I will pour my Spirit upon all flesh. And that is exactly this thing. And to every man and every woman that received this power and the anointing of God, the miracles of God, there was no ending to it. We have talked about miracles. We have talked about signs and wonders. But I could not help but weep as the letter from our native workers. This is only the evidence of the beginning for one man, a do-nothing and unheard of, who would go and stretch forth his hand and say, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command life to flow into your body. I dropped to my knees and began to pray again. And I said, Lord, I know that this thing is coming to pass, and I believe it's coming soon. And then again, as these people were going about the face of the earth, a great persecution seemed to come from every angle. Suddenly, there was another great clap of thunder that seemed to resound around the world, and I heard again the voice, the voice that seemed to speak, Now this is my people. This is my beloved bride. And when the voice spoke, I looked upon the earth, and I could see the lakes and the mountains. The graves were opened, and people from all over the world, the saints of all ages, seemed to be rising, and as they rose from the grave, suddenly all of these people came from every direction 
from the east and the west, from the north and the south, and they seem to be forming again this gigantic body. As the dead in Christ seemed to be rising first, I could hardly comprehend it. It was so marvelous. It was so far beyond anything I could ever dream or think of. But as this body suddenly began to form and take shape again, it took shape again in the form of this mighty giant. But this time it was different. It was arrayed in the most beautiful, gorgeous white. Its garments were without spot or wrinkle as its body began to form. And the people of all ages seemed to be gathered into this body. And slowly, slowly, as it began to form up into the very heavens, suddenly from the heavens above, the Lord Jesus came and became the head. And I heard another clap of thunder that said, This is my beloved bride for whom I have waited. She will come forth, even tried by fire. This is she that I have loved from the beginning of time. As I watched, my eyes suddenly turned to the far north, and I saw seemingly destruction, men and women in anguish and crying out, and buildings in destruction. Then I heard again the fourth voice that said, Now is my wrath being poured out upon the face of the earth. From the ends of the whole world, the wrath of God seemed to be poured out. And it seemed that there were great vials of God's wrath being poured out upon the face of the earth. I can remember it as though it happened a moment ago. I shook and trembled as I beheld the awful sight of seeing the cities and whole nations going down into destruction. I could hear the weeping and the wailing. I could hear people crying. They seemed to cry as they went into caves, but the caves in the mountains opened up. They leaped into water, but the water would not drown them. There was nothing that could destroy them. They were wanting to take their lives, but they could not. Then again, I turned my eyes to this glorious sight, this body arrayed in beautiful white, shining garments. Slowly, slowly, it began to lift from the earth, and as I did, I awoke. What a sight I had beheld. I had seen the end time ministries, the last hour, again on July 27th, 2.30 at 2.30 in the morning, the same revelation. The same vision came again exactly as it did before. Amazing. My life has been changed as I realize that we are living in that end time. For all over the world, God is anointing men and women with this ministry. It will not be doctrine. It will not be a churchy entity. It is going to be Jesus Christ. They will give forth the word of the Lord and are going to say, I heard it so many times in the vision, and according to my word, it shall be done. Oh, my people, listen to me. According to my word, it shall be done. We are going to be clothed with power and anointing from God. We won't have to preach sermons. We won't have to have persons heckle us in public. We won't have to depend on man, nor will we be denomination echoes, but we will have the power of the living God. We will fear no man, but will go in the name of the Lord of hosts. Amen and amen. Not only is this faith building, but it also gives us a reason to push in and press on. It really does. So thank you for listening. 